Abu Ali Hassan ibn Ali Tusi April 10, 1018 to October 14, 1092, better known by his honorific title of Nizam al-Mulk Persian, Nizam al Order of the Realm, was a Persian scholar and vizier of the Seljuk Empire. Rising from a lowly position, he was the de facto ruler of the empire for 20 years after the assassination of Alp Arslan in 1072, with a apotheosis as the Islamic history's archetypal good vizier. One of his most important legacies was founding schools in cities throughout the Seljuk Empire. These were called Nezamayas. After him, he wrote Siyasatnama, Book of Government, a political treatise that uses historical examples to discuss justice, effective rule, and the role of government in Islamic society. <laughs> Early life and service to the Ghaznavids Abu Ali Hassan was born on April 10, 1018 in a small village named Radkin, near Tus, in Iran, to a Deccan family. His father Ali ibn Ishaq served as a financial officer to the Ghaznavids. However, when the Seljuk Turks defeated the Ghaznavids at the Battle of Dandanakan in 1040, and conquered Khorasan, Abu Ali Hassan's father fled to Ghazni, where Abu Ali Hassan was working within the government, and spent three years working there until he left the city. <laughs> <laughs> Service to the Seljuks Reign of Turul and Alp Arslan Around the year of 1043, Abu Ali Hassan stopped serving the Ghaznavids and entered the service of the Seljuk Turks. He later became chief administrator of the entire Khorasan province by 1059. When Turul died childless in the city of Ray, he was succeeded by his nephew Suleiman which was contested by Alp Arslan, both of them sons of his brother Chagri. His cousin Kutamish who had both been a vital part of his campaigns and later a supporter of Yinal's rebellion also put forth a claim. Alp Arslan, with the aid of Abu Ali Hassan, defeated Kutamish and succeeded him on April 27, 1064. After Alp Arslan had consolidated his power in the Seljuk realm, he appointed Abu Ali Hassan as his vizier who would remain in that position throughout the reigns of Alp Arslan 1063 and Malik Shah I Abu Ali Hassan was also given the title of Nizam al-Mulk Alp Arslan's strength lays in the military realm. Domestic affairs were handled by Nizam al-Mulk, who also founded the administrative organization that characterized and strengthened the Sultanate during the reigns of Alp Arslan and his son, Malik Shah I. Military fiefs, governed by Seljuk princes, were established to provide support for the soldiery and to accommodate the nomadic Turks to the established Anatolian agricultural scene. This type of military fiefdom enabled the nomadic Turks to draw on the resources of the sedentary Iranians, Turks, and other established cultures within the Seljuk realm, and allowed Alp Arslan to field a huge standing army without depending on tribute from conquest to pay his soldiers. He not only had enough food from his subjects to maintain his military, but the taxes collected from traders and merchants added to his coffers sufficiently to fund his continuous wars. Nizam accompanied Alp Arslan in all his campaigns and journeys, except a few. In February, March 1064 Alp Arslan, along with his son Malik Shah I and Nizam al-Mulk, campaigned in Byzantine Armenia, where they managed to capture Ani. Several minor rulers then acknowledged Seljuk authority, while Alp Arslan and Nizam continued to penetrate deeper into the Caucasus, reaching Georgia. The Georgian ruler Bagrat IV, managed to make peace with Alp Arslan by giving his niece to him in marriage. Nizam also made some expeditions on his own and conquered the citadel of Estakar from the Shabankara chieftain Fadluya in 1067, and made another expedition in Fars. These successful conquests are said to have greatly increased his reputation. On August 26, 1071, the decisive Battle of Manzikert was fought, which Nizam al-Mulk had missed because he had been sent to Persia with a convoy of materials. Reign of Malik Shah I Following Alp Arslan's assassination in 1072, Malik Shah I was challenged in battle by his uncle, Kavert. In January 1074, their armies met near Hamadan. Kavert's troops consisted of the traditional Turkmen elements from Alp Arslan's army, while Malik's consisted of Ghulams and contingents of Kurdish and Arab troops. 
Due to Turkmen defections to Malik's army, Kavert was defeated and, despite Malik's consideration for mercy, later poisoned, presumably on the orders of Nizam al Mulk. Under Nizam's excellent guidance, the Seljuk armies contained the Ghaznavids in Khorasan, rolled back the Fatimids in Syria, defeated other Seljuk pretenders to the throne, invaded Georgia and reduced it to a tributary state, compelled the submission of regional governors, and kept the Abbasid caliphs in a position of impotence. Nizam al Mulk left a great mark on organization of the Seljuk government governmental bodies and hence the title Nizam al-Mulk which translates as order of the realm. He bridged political gaps among the Abbasids, the Seljuks, and their various rivals such as the Fatimids. The Seljuk military was heavily mixed of different ethnicity, including Turks, Armenians, Greeks, Arabs, and Slavs. Nizam, however, favored Iranian soldiers, such as the Dalamites, Khorasanis, and the Shabankara Kurds. He also favored non Iranian soldiers such as the Georgians. Nizam al Mulk's many political objectives included creating an employment opportunity for the Turkmens, who had immigrated to the Iranian plateau during the Seljuk successes in Persia. The nomadic way of life of the Turkmens represented a significant threat to the political and economic stability of the country. Demonstrating the power of the Sultan, i.e., the strength and mobility of his forces, but also his grace towards docile rebels. Maintaining local Sunni and Shiite rulers as vassals of the Sultan and the increased use of relatives of the Sultan as provincial governors. Preventing dissents over the succession of Malik Shah I. Maintaining good relations with the Abbasid Caliphate. In 1081 1082, Ibn Bamanyar, one of the many enemies of Nizam, tried to poison him, but failed and was blinded by Nizam. After the blinding of Ibn Bamanyar, the enemies of Nizam made false stories about him and his son. This greatly angered Nizam's son Jamal al-Mulk, who tore out the tongue of Jafarak, one of the perpetrators of the false stories. Malik Shah had no power to intervene in the event, but instead had Jamal poisoned. In 1091, a group of Karmatians sacked Basra, while the Ismailis under the leadership of Hassan i Sabah seized the fortress of Alamut. Moreover, the succession to the Sultanate was complicated by the death of two of Malik Shah's eldest sons, Dawud died 1082 and Ahmad died 1088, whom both were sons of the Kara Khanid princess Tarkhan Khatan. She also had a son named Mahmud born 1087, whom she wanted to succeed his father, while Nizam and most of the Seljuk army was in favor of Barkiyaruk, the oldest of all Malik Shah's living sons and born to a Seljuk princess. Turkan Khatan then allied with Taj al Mulk Abul Ghanaim to try to remove Nizam from his post. Taj even accused Nizam of corruption before the Sultan. Malik Shah I, however, did not dare to dismiss Nizam. Nizam later besieged Alamut, but was forced to withdraw. In 1092, Nizam, just before his death, knowing that his enemies were planning plots against him, made a famous speech at the court. Tell the Sultan, if you have not already realized that I am your co-equal in the work of ruling, then know that you have only attained to this power through my statesmanship and judgment. Does he not remember when his father was killed, and I assumed responsibility for the conduct of affairs and crushed the rebels who reared their heads, from his own family and from elsewhere? Tell him that the stability of that regal cap is bound up with this viziarial inkstand, and that the harmony of these two interests is the means of securing all objects sought after and the ultimate cause of all objects gained. If ever I close up this inkstand, that royal power will topple. Topic. Works Aside from his extraordinary influence as vizier with full authority, he is also well known for systematically founding a number of schools of higher education in several cities like Baghdad, Isfahan, Nishapur, Mosul, Basra, and Herat, the famous Nizamiya schools, which were named after him. In many aspects, these schools turned out to be the predecessors and models of universities that were established in Europe. Nizam al-Mulk is also widely known for his voluminous treatise on kingship titled Siyasatnama the Book of Government which was written after Malik Shah had requested that his ministers produce books on government, administration and the troubles facing the nation. However, the treatise made by Nizam was the only one to receive approval and was consequently accepted as forming the law of the constitution of the nation." The treatise uses historical examples to discuss justice, effective rule, and the role of government in Islamic society, and has been compared to Machiavelli's The Prince. 
The work also discusses various aspects of state surveillance and spying, advising rulers to establish an extensive espionage network. He also wrote a book titled Dastor al Wazara, written for his son Abulfath Fakhr al Malik, which is not dissimilar to the famous book of Qabis Nama. Death Nizam al-Mulk was assassinated en route from Isfahan to Baghdad on 10 Ramadan 485 AH the, 14th of October 1092. the mainstream literature says he was stabbed by the dagger of a member of the assassins Hash Shashin sent by the notorious Hassan i Saba near Nahavan, as he was being carried on his litter. The killer approached him disguised as a dervish. This account is particularly interesting in light of a possibly apocryphal story recounted by Jorge Luis Borges. In this story, a pact is formed between a young Nizam al Mulk at that time known as Abdul Qasim and his two friends, Omar Khayyam and Hassan i Saba. Their agreement stated that if one should rise to prominence, that they would help the other two to do likewise. Nizam al Mulk was the first to do this when he was appointed vizier to the Sultan Alp Arslan. To fulfill the pact he offered both friends positions of rank within the court. Omar refused the offer, asking instead to be given the means to continue his studies indefinitely. This Nizam did, as well as building him an observatory. Although Hassan, unlike Omar, decided to accept the appointment offered to him, he was forced to flee after plotting to dispose Nizam as vizier. Subsequently, Hassan came upon and conquered the fortress of Alamut, from where he established the assassins. Another report says he was killed in secret by Malik Shah I in an internal power struggle. Consequently, his murder was avenged by the vizier's loyal academics of the Nizamiya, by assassinating the Sultan. The account is disputed and remains a controversy because of the long history of friendship between Malik Shah I and Nizam. Another report says that he was assassinated with Malik Shah I in the same year, after a debate between Sunni and Shia scholars which was prepared by him by the orders of Malik Shah I and which resulted in converting him and the king to the Shia ideology. The story is reported by the son-in-law of Nizam al-Mulk, Mughadal ibn Bakri who attended the debate. <laughs> Legacy Nizam al-Mulk was an excellent and clever vizier, he represented the majesty, splendor and hospitality of the Barmakids. Historians and poets describe him as a great organizer and an ideal soldier and scholar. Only thanks to him it was possible for the Seljuk Turks to establish a powerful empire in their new home. Nizam was not only the leader of the Persian-dominated bureaucratic divan, but was also an Atabeg who served in the royal court Dadgar and played an important role between the politically and culturally differences of the Iranians and Turks. He was also responsible for establishing distinctly Persian forms of government and administration which would last for centuries. Because of his excellent tutorship and close friendship with Malik Shah, he was usually called father by him. He was even greatly respected by his Ghulams, who, after the death of Nizam, took revenge on several of his rivals, such as Taj al-Mulk. Even after his death his family continued to play an important role in the Seljuk Empire. All of his twelve sons held important offices in the Seljuk Empire. The most prominent of his sons were, Ahmad ibn Nizam al-Mulk, served as the vizier of the Seljuk Sultan Muhammad I and the Abbasid Caliph al-Mustarshid. Shams al-Mulk Uthman was the governor of Merv and head of the Seljuk military. Fakhr al-Mulk served as the vizier of Barkiaruk and Muhammad I. Jamal al-Mulk who died before Nizam served as the governor of Balkh. Is al-Mulk and Mu'ayyid al-Mulk served as the vizier of Barkiaruk. Imad al-Mulk Abul Kazim served as the vizier of the Seljuk governor of Balkh. References Sources Aladashvili Besik, Fearless, A Fascinating Story of Secret Medieval Spies, 2017. C. E. Bosworth, 2012. Nizam al-Mulk. Encyclopedia of Islam. Leiden and New York, Brill. ISBN 9789004161225. Tafazul Ahmed Ali, 1994. Deccan. Encyclopedia Iranica, Vol. 7, FASC, 2 and Vol. 7, FASC, 3. Ahmad Tafazoli. pp. 223-226. Bosworth, C. E. 1968. 
The Political and Dynastic History of the Iranian World AD 1000 to 1217 In Fry RN The Cambridge History of Iran Volume 5 The Saljuk and Mongol Periods Cambridge Cambridge University Press pp 1 to 202 ISBN 0 to 521069366X Yuvari Nagin 2015 Nezm al-Mulk Encyclopedia Iranica. Bosworth, C. Edmund. 1984. Ahmad B. Nezm al-Mulk. Encyclopedia Iranica, Vol. I. Fasc. 6. London et al., C. Edmund Bosworth. pp. 642-643. Nizam, al-Mulk. The Book of Government or Rules for Kings, the Cr al-Mulk or Siasat Nama of Nizam al-Mulk. Nizam al-Mulk pp. 1-264. ISBN 0700712283. External links The story behind the assassination Gokman Durmush — Upen Master's thesis on Turkish wisdom More photos, Tishina.